Millions of years ago, weather shaped our planet. It created mountains, forests, deserts, and millions of mysterious creatures, all waiting to be discovered. Hold on, guys. It's gonna get pretty bumpy. Oh, <laughs> oh damn. My name is Sean Dugan. I'm an explorer, and I've dedicated my life to tracking down the creatures that were shaped by our planet's most extreme climates. I'm in Western Belize on the hunt for the Minicau, a legendary cave-dwelling creature that locals swear is real. My hunt for the Minicau starts on the outskirts of the sleepy little village of San Ignacio. Salvador Williams knows more about the Minicau than anyone in the world. So the legend of the Minicau has been talked about around this village for a long time. My father was a bush doctor. He told me that there's a big snake that go to 75 feet long. And then he told me that the, the snake eat people. The Minicau sounds eerily similar to a creature that used to live in this region millions of years ago. A 42 foot long, 2400 pound serpent known as the Titanoboa. Could the Minicau be a descendant of this giant snake? Is there a specific cave where this Minicau lives? In the cave, Atun Sepat. We, the people, are afraid to go there because if you go to the cave, you might not come back. So Mr. Williams basically told me that if I head down this road, deep in the jungle, we will find the cave of Aktun Shepat. Weathers turn this road inside out, and it's also responsible for the 10,000 caves carved into the jungle floor by a massive amount of rainfall. 170 inches a year. As rainwater falls, it absorbs carbon dioxide, reacting with the calcium carbonate in the limestone and eating away at it to create one of the largest unexplored subterranean labyrinths in the world. The perfect hiding spot for the reclusive Minicau. I can't even imagine what a 75 foot long snake would look like. The largest snake that I've ever seen was 25, 30 feet long, boa constrictor. That sidewalk is only 50 feet long. For the Minicow to get that big, it would need a ton of space to grow, a steady food supply, and just the right climate. 20 miles into the jungle, I meet up with my crew. How's it going? How's the drive? There's caving experts Doug and Kent, and Leo, a local guide. So what have you heard about the Minicau? Well, Chapat, Octon Chapat, is named after a Mayan word, which means worm-like serpent, which can mean anything from a worm to a giant snake. So we're looking in the right place for this Minicau, I would think. If any cave around here fits it with a name, it would be Octon, be Octon Chapat. We'd be crossing a major river right now if this was the rainy season. If we have yeah. a thunderstorm run through here, yeah. this, this cave could flood. Things can, yeah, things can happen instantly. While most of us are used to four seasons, Belize has two, dry and wet. With three times as much rain as our rainiest state, Hawaii, Every plant and creature living here has adapted to the torrential downpours. You know why these termites build their nest here on these trees? Because of the rain, the amount of rainfall we have in this area. They'll build them, depending on how the area floods, yes. they'll build them higher and yeah, higher and no, higher. No. Have you tried termites? It's edible. Did you try just it? stick them in your mouth? Yes. Tastes like they've been eating wood. They're a little woody. Feel the breeze? <laughs> We got a nice cool breeze. That's a good indication that our cave is nearby. Just up ahead, we find the source of that cool breeze, along with an ancient Mayan warning at the entrance of Octun Shapat. 
This is a carving was done probably 600 AD. So it's almost 1500 years old. These are the lower fan, and these are the upper fan. There is the eye. It makes me wonder, what did the Mayans know 1500 years ago? And what are we getting ourselves into? Mayans once considered caves like this to be the portal to the underworld. Wow. Look at the size of this opening. Could it be possible that there's a giant serpent hiding deep inside? If we're gonna find something, this is definitely the place to find it. Hot, humid air outside mixes with the cool air inside, forming condensation and vapor clouds. It's no surprise the Mayans believe these caves were home to the weather gods. So the Maya believed that wind and clouds and rain was born here in the caves. Yes, it was from here, from this cave system. So you can feel the weather coming out of you. You can feel the changes and the moisture. This cave could be 10 miles deep, meaning dozens of microclimates and thousands of creatures. You're gonna see wildlife that can survive completely in the darkness. Some of them probably spending their whole life in the darkness. So we could have, if there's a food source, a serpent down there of completely unknown proportions. Absolutely. New species of animals are discovered every year on this planet. It's some of our last frontiers. Almost a mile into the cave, we enter a large cavern, the perfect habitat for a giant snake. This room is incredibly big. The ceiling's almost 60, 70 feet above us. And you can see the formations all around us from the slow dripping water up here. We're just in the center of a rock that's been carved out by water. Every time the weather changes, something happens down here and the incredible things get formed within the earth. So far, no Minicow, which means we have to push deeper. Look at this. You can see this has all been dissolved away. Yeah, there's, there's been a lot of moving, fast moving water in this cave. In a serious flood condition, I mean, it, this whole room could be bank to bank water flowing. Floodwaters wash in many creatures and could have brought them in a cow. The millipedes are everywhere if you look, thousands of them. They've also created the perfect habitat for troglobites, who are often blind, deaf, and translucent because of a lack of sunlight. But these critters aren't nearly enough to feed a 75-foot mega beast. Wait, there's stuff moving over there. We got bats flying everywhere. They're all over here. I've seen about three to four species already fly by. There are bats in Belize that do eat birds, aren't there? There are, you have the false vampire. They get a wingspan up to almost two feet. Two feet, that is a, a legitimate monster. There's millions of them, more than enough food for the Minicow to thrive. So it's possible that we could have a big snake in here that's easily just feeding on oh, bats oh, constantly. And it would be easy pickings. Because there's millions of bats. Exactly, there. yeah. Look at this Look line at this. right here. Right here's a line right here. A little over a mile in, we find our first evidence of a serpent. This could be a snake trail right here. If you look carefully, there's actually, a, it's kind of straight, but it does slither a little bit and it just drops off the edge there. Something bigger came right through here. This track is a huge find. It tells us that a serpent-like creature has been down here before. The question is, what is it? Or better yet, where is it? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Are you okay, Doug? Doug? Three feet to the right, there's a 30-foot drop. You're okay? Yeah, I just, there's a little ledge right here, and it's, <laughs> adrenaline's going. It's just real slippery right here, and it drops off on the other side, so. Uh, I'm okay. Others who came this way 
may not have been so lucky. Whoa, look over there. What is this here that we have around here? That looks like, that looks like some bones. Yeah, the jawbone there. And then we have the skull. Then look over here, guys. Like. Those, those are human teeth. Yeah. And you can see the holes there. They had the inlay of jade there. So, so these are these are the teeth of royalty? Of the royalty of the Mayan elite. We've stumbled across a Mayan burial site. The weather can be a treasure hunter's best friend when floods bring literal gems up to the surface. Oh, check it out, check it out. Holy cow. I found a Mayan pot, a bowl, very rare, very, very rare, intact. Artifacts that have been buried for thousands of years have now washed up. There's a completely intact Mayan bowl. If floodwaters washed these artifacts to the surface, maybe they also carried a large snake into the depths of the cave. We're almost two miles deep, and the temperature has taken a drastic turn. We've entered a new microclimate within the cave. We're so deep in the cave right now, and it is hot and humid down here. <laughs> It's a geothermal chamber, a part of the cave that's heated not from the ground above us, but from magma below, rising closer to the Earth's crust. We've seen everything a Minicow would need. Habitat, food, and now the same environment of its ancestor, the Titanoboa, who thrived in a hot prehistoric climate. It is a sauna down here. What is that? What do we got? Wait. Look at that, look at that. Whoa! <laughs> we gotta stay back. 